Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala al-Qur'ana hudan lin-nasi wa 'allamnahu wa zakkayna bihi wa arsalna nabiyyan mu'allima la habiba al-'azama sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam li bayyana al-ayat li annahu sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam akhlaqahu Qur'an fa ma abyana wa awdaha li ma'ani al-Qur'an minhu sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina Muhammadin al-mutarjim al-Qur'an bidisani wa akhlaqi sharifu ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim nawaina bidirasatina li tafsiri ayat al-Qur'an munajid Allah ta'ala istikhraj al-ulum al-Qur'an wa di'aza bi kalam Allah ta'ala wa itmi'nana bihi wa ziyarat al-iman wa tanwira qulubina wa sharaha sudurina wa ibtigha al-ujuri wa thawab wa husn ridwan wa rahman wa dukhul fi ahli Allah wa khawasatihi wa ghufran al-dhunub wa shifaa fi ajzarina wa qulubina wa silah ahlina wa awladina wa silah al-muslimina wa nawayna manna huwa huwa nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam 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 فاتحة. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لحظة أبدا على نعم الله وأفضاله اللهم آتنا من لدنك رحمة وعلمنا من لدنك علما سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نويت تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم سلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علما نفقه به أوامرك ونواهيك ورزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف نناجيك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك فهم النبي وحفظ المسلين وإلهم الملائكة المقرب في عافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغنى بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرم بالتقى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقالد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه يرجع الأمور كلها يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقط من لسان يفقه قولي وسد لساني وهدي قلبي وافعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا ورزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع كمال إخلاص الصدق واليقين والعافية والغنى والنسر وحفظ النفع والانتفاء وخيرة الدارين وعلم العولين والآخر الآمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة أنا أمن وياك نستعين لنسرة ونستقل لنسرة الحمد لله alright last week الحمد لله we began with سورة علق right and we did not go strictly into the tafsir yet right we only spoke about the sebab nuzul and the sebab nuzul the reason as to why it was revealed right from Allah سبحانه 
wa ta'ala right so so we mentioned it was the first five verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed unto Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we mentioned also about uh, uh, the signs of prophethood unto Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam right uh, uh, what what he was given from before uh, he got the first revelation right uh, for, for, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and then we mentioned that it was made beloved for him seclusion so he began to seclude himself from the time he was age 35 under 35 up to 40, he was secluding himself. Very young age, you know, if you think about it. It's very, very young. 35 is, you know, in our time, you know, 35 is, is what? You know, one of those young, young men out there who's just looking for a job or, you know, like people who are just getting into marriage and just you know, young men, right? So Rasulullah at that point, right, he was 35, he began to love seclusion. Right? He began to seclude himself in the cave, right? And you mentioned that also that uh, his, his predecessors, right, his ancestors, they themselves also used to seclude themselves in the cave, right? Was, uh, where Rasulullah, the exact same cave where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi would seclude himself. And Sayyidina Khadija radiallahu anha, right? She would actually go up and she would send food for Rasulullah sallallahu but he would stay there for for for, for a month on end, right? Without coming down uh, for provision. And sometimes he would meet her halfway on the mountain, right? Uh, to get his provision, right? So that means they will meet, you know, together on the on the mountain, right? You know, Allah. right? So uh, and you mentioned the first revelation, right? Iqra, we mentioned about uh, the Ijaz Jibril coming down. And that when he ran down from the from the cave, right, everywhere he looked, he could see the angel standing on the horizon. And right, so the angel would stand on the horizon as in the form of a man. And right, that's what we understand. Right, because Rasulullah only ever saw the uh, full form of Jibril alayhi uh, salam in Isra Mi'raj. When he asked Jibril, show me your full form. Right, and Jibril showed his full form with the 700 wings on each side. You know, and he was huge. And he, and he was right that he, he filled up the entire of the horizon. That means that all that I could see. Right, Jibril filled up. Right, so Subhanallah, there's, there's one angel of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right, and right before this surah, we went to Surah Qadr. You know, Allah Subhanahu describes that, that on that day, tadazzalul malaikatu wa ruh. Right, on that day, the angels and uh, and uh, and and, uh, and uh, Jibril alaihi salam, right, they come down and, and, and they come down, tadazzal and they come down one after another, continuously throughout the night. I mean, it's not like they all come down one go, you know. Right, throughout the night from Maghrib until Subuh, they are coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. Endless, you know, flow of angels from, from the heavens to the earth. Right, and we understand from another hadith, right, that the angels are the most number, right, uh, the, uh, the, the, the most of creation in number. Right, so the angels compared to the, uh, the sea creatures, right, they will say, uh, you know, it's one is to a, a thousand or to a million, one is to a million, right, if I'm not wrong, the, the hadith goes. Right, and then from sea creatures to the land creatures, is the same uh, ratio. Land creatures, right, to the jinn, same ratio. The jinn to the humans, same ratio. Right, so you know, we we are the least you know, of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's creation, human beings. We are not that much. Right? The angels, right, they are they are. It's beyond your even your even perception. You can't even imagine the number right, of angels there are right, uh, in this uh, in this creation. Right? And one angel, of course, you know, covers the entire earth and what's in it. Right? You know, would cover the whole and encompass the entire earth. Right, so subhanAllah, when you have angels coming down you know, uh, on Ayatul Qadr, uh, what it means. Right? So, so really, it's really back to back, they're everywhere. Right? And, they are, and they are looking out for the majalis, right? the, 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 the places whereby the believers are standing. Right? And we are in the nights of Zulhijjah, right? we are in the, 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 the first uh, 10 nights of Zulhijjah, whereby in the hadith, every single night is equal to Laylatul Qadr. Right? Every single night of Zulhijjah. So don't waste, you know, we have three more nights to go. Right, of the first nine nights, and then thereafter we have the night of 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 uh, Eid, right, which is of the five nights that you should bring to life. Whoever brings this night to life, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will bring his heart to life on the day where all hearts will die, right? So Subhanallah, you know. So 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 uh, so right now we have tonight. So Alhamdulillah, we are laying tafsir. Right, on one of these great nights, but your deeds will be multiplied as if it's on Laylatul Qadr. Right, us sitting here now today, right, doing this, right, it's multiplying our deeds uh, more than a thousand months. Right, because the Qadr is a thousand months. Right, so therefore, if every single in the hadith, if every single night fasting every single day in the first nine days of Zulhijjah is equal to a fast of one year. Right, and the spend standing in prayer in every single night of the first nine nights of Zulhijjah is equal to standing in prayer in the night of Laylatul Qadr. Right. So, so, so subhanAllah, you know, if, if you are missing out, you're missing out. You're really missing out. If you, if you are, like, and subhanAllah, it's not too late. We have a few more nights to go. Tonight, Sunday night, Monday night, right? T- uh, Tuesday night is already high raya. Right? Monday night, especially don't miss it out. Right? Don't miss out on Monday night. Monday night is the night of Arafah. Right? It is, it is uh, it's a night where, where every dua right, that is made in that night, Allah subhanAllah will accept. Right? Every dua of righteousness, right, of course, right, that, that is made in that night, Allah subhanAllah will not reject. 
Right? So whatever is, you know, is on your mind of this dunya, of the akhirah, make, make akhirah to us. Right? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah paradise. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of your ancestors and descendants. Uh, you know, of all your family, your friends, everybody, the entire uh, uh, ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, put it into your dua. Right? Do as much as you can on the night of Arafah, right? it means uh, Monday night. Right? And then on Tuesday night, a night of uh, Eid. Right. So alhamdulillah, you know, we have come to this part of, of, of the Quran and we are in these special nights. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. Right. So subhanallah, so, so when you read uh, uh, Iqra, you know, in, 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 uh, the, 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 the ayats here in Surah Alaq, right, and you imagine that you know, we are in these great nights. So in learning the tafsir you know, and having righteous intentions as to why we are learning tafsir and why we want to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book, right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this special night, and tonight is Saturday night, right, on this special night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you Right, the uh, will give you your right, right in the answering of your righteous dua or your righteous intentions. He will give you as, as what you have intended because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than that. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not deny you if you want closest to Him. Right? Definitely, He will give it to you. Definitely, there is no doubt that whoever seeks closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give. Right? Allah, will not, Allah will never turn away right, from the one who is seeking Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, uh, Masayna Muhammad. Alright, so so we, we so we, we spoke about that last week, right, about the revelation, right, uh, and about how he ran to Sayyidina Khadija and how Sayyidina Khadija herself could recognize what was going on with her husband, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that she was prepared and she knew that he had the signs of prophethood and she was expecting him to be a prophet, right? And she understood that he what he what he was going through was shock. Right? He was actually going through shock. Right. So which is why she wrapped him. And why he also asked her to wrap her. So he also was aware of what's going was what's happening to him. Like he was very much, you know, Rasulullah SAW, at all times his mind was very sharp and very aware. So he knew exactly what it was that was happening to him. Right? He was not, you know, like, like uh, uh, stunned or whatsoever, but he was in shock and he knew he was in shock. Right? He knew what he was going through was shock. Right? So, so he asked to be wrapped up, right? to be held right? until the shock, you know, uh, faded away right? and then his chest began to expand. Right, to this mission that has been placed onto his shoulders, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, and then she brought him to her cousin Waraka. We mentioned about Waraka also, right, and that he passed away soon after Waraka bin Naufal, right? That and then he passed away soon after, soon after because you know had he lived on, they would have blamed that he was the one who taught Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi the Quran. Right, so so he had to go off, you know, early. He was long enough there to just to affirm to Rasulullah SAW that yes, indeed, right, you are the last prophet. You are the, the, the final the final prophet that has been awaited for. Right, so then thereafter, right, uh, the the the, the da'wah was secret. Right, so we're going to go into the tafsir of the first few verses. Right, the first few verses of Surah Alaq. Right, the tafsir of the first few verses of Surah Alaq, and then we'll go a bit more into the sirah. Then we'll go into the next few verses. Then we'll take the lessons from these verses. Right? We're going to go into lessons from these uh, verses. Right? So here when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqa. Right? Iqra. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the creation with a command. It begins, sorry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the revelation with a command. Right? If, you know, of all things to say, you know, of all things to say, Allah begins with a command. Read. Right? Read. Bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. And this verse is so full of so much indication that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants of us. Right? So like I don't know where to begin, you know, in the, in the tafsir of this verse. Every single word in this verse is a tafsir itself. This is the first verse. This is... Let me, let me try to structure about how we're going to do this. Eh? Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to write it down. Okay, let's so just to show you all the breaking out of this verse. <laughs> okay, see this verse. Eh? Okay, every single word in this verse right, is a tafsir itself. Okay, iqra. Okay, first thing, it is a command. Right, what, are, what are commands? Commands are basically words that, uh, that, that 
uh, any yatlub, any request that requires obedience. Wa commands. When someone commands something, what are they expecting? Obedience. Right? You will not command anything if you do not expect obedience. From the very beginning of this mission, from the very beginning of the revelation, obedience. Obey this Lord. Obey. Right? And if you want to know why obedience, why? From the word Iqra itself. You know, it's, it's amazing how this stuff it's just, it's just so, like, it just, it flaws you. Lah. From, from, the, from the word Iqra itself, you want to ask and argue, why should I obey? Why should I obey? Go and study and then you'll find out why you should obey. Right? Increase in knowledge. Right? Should lead to obedience. Increase in knowledge will lead you to obedience. So if somebody is arguing, you know, like, like, like read, no, no, if they say obedience, why should I obey? I don't want to obey. The more, the more you actually increase in your knowledge, the more you'll begin to obey. Right? The more you learn about Islam, right? the more you, know, you, you really go into the depths of this, of this religion, of the theology, of the aqidah, of the fiqh, of the seerah, of the hadith. The more you learn, the more you obey. Right, the more you obey, so subhanallah. Right, so it's people, you know, the more, the more they, and if, if, if you don't obey, that means you're not learning. You know, learning is how you should be learning. So you see, from the word ikhra, that's a command. Right, from the word ikhra, that is a indication, increase in knowledge if you want to follow the command of obedience. Right, ikhra. Right, and then if somebody further asks, like, like if somebody further asks, right, why should I obey right, this, this one that is commanding me? Right, and the, second, the third thing is that ikhra, Right, that because I'm saying a moment, put it here. Eh? Right, by the name, that means by the power, by the will. By the name means what? By the will, by the power. Right, by the permission. Right, by the permission. Right. By the will, by the power, by the permission of the one that nurtures you. Right? A robber. Right? The one. Right? The one who nurtures you. Right? Loves you. Right? Uh, looks after you. That is robbed. From the beginning of the surah, from the beginning of the surah, right. First and foremost, you're being you're, you're being commanded, and then you're being commanded to increase your knowledge. And as you increase your knowledge, you will increase your obedience. As you increase your obedience, you will increase your knowledge. And as you increase your knowledge, you will increase your obedience. And it will be one cycle over and over and over again until you get closer and closer and closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So you want close to God Subhanahu Wa Taala. You want to know who is your Rob? Then go and read. Right, go and increase in your knowledge. Right? But, but understand that you doing this is only by His name, by His command, by His leave, by His power, by His permission, right? by His will. I mean, it's not even by you. It's not even by you that you're able to do this. And only when you do it by Him will you get closest to Him. Right? If you do it for other reason, then not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So bismi, right, will, power, permission, right, for the sake of. Right, for the sake of God. Right, so if you do any of these things without God in mind, without God as your focus, as your goal, then you will get nothing right, of your knowledge. You will get nothing of obedience. Right, so, Bismirabbika, right, that means by the name of your Lord, means by His power, by His permission, right, by His will, right, by His, and, and for His sake. That means by Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which tells us in this part, right, that means focus on your Lord. Focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you go through this life. Focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you see commandments. When you see, when, because laws will, be start, will start to come down. Sharia is going to be, be, be sent down to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we see the Sharia, do we see our ustad or our ustada? Or do we see our parents? Or do we see, you know, if you're always going to see these people, after a while you're going to leave the Sharia. Because human beings can't see you all the time. Human beings only see you when you're in front of them. Right, so if you're obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which most human beings, you begin to obey because of your parents. And your parents tell you to do something, so you begin to do it. Right? So, so if, if your obedience is based on a human being, 
right? and not based on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that obedience will be short-lived. It's not going to last the rest of your life. So as you grow older, right, as you, as you, as you, when you're young, you at first do it for your parents. But as you grow older, you begin to have to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have to begin to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only when you do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, then right, you will increase in your knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so, iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Right, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions one of the ni'mah. Right, one of the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala onto us. And the first and the strongest ni'mah that he has onto us is that he created. Right, Allah is the creator. And in Islam, yeah, sorry. And in Islam, uh, uh, in Islam, this is the first proof. Of Godship. Right? First proof of Godship. To show that someone is a God or, or a being is a God. The first proof and the only proof, in fact, is that He created. Right? If whatever you are worshipping did not create, that cannot be God. Right? And it's now, and the whole Quran maintains this. Right? Ask them, right? see, this is what my God created. Show me what did those besides Him create. Sure, sure. And what did he create? Allah subhanahu wa boasts about his creation. And Allah puts in the Quran the proof that he is indeed the creator. Because he speaks about his creation in a way that nobody can speak about the creation. Because of course he's the creator. Right? So Allah says, if, you, if you're in doubt, right? so you see, you see, subhanAllah, you see, this, this entire verse addresses the believer, right? the disbeliever, whether he's an atheist or whether he is a, uh, poly, uh, he, he is in, uh, he is, a, a polytheist, right? Whether he's a polytheist, an atheist, right? Uh, or whether he is a, even a believer, right? So the first thing about the believer, about the believer, right? Increase your knowledge, increase your obedience, right? The believer does that, right? So the believer, when he reads the first, the first verse, Iqra, Bismi Rabbika Ladi Khalaq, right? Straight away, the believer goes into humbleness, and right? he understands the one who gives me everything, right? The one who created me, right? From, from, from what I was not. Right, and the one who brought me up, the one who gave me strength, the one who gave me whatever I have, that is my Rabb. Right, Rabbika, I'm going to speak about it in a while. Like, Rabbika ya Muhammad. Right, whenever there is a singular you in the Quran, it is referring to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, specifically him. Right, specifically him. Right, so the one who created Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the greatest ni'mah in this creation. Right, there is no greater blessing onto the creation than the existence of Rasulullah wasallam. So Allah did not give anything greater in blessing to the entire of creation. The entire of creation from, from, from Nabi Adam's time right, to our time, all the disbelievers, everybody, right, the, 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 their greatest blessing in their life is that Rasulullah was created and he was sent. So Rabbika, right, Rabbika ya Muhammad refers to uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbika. Right. Here also shows us prophethood. You see how many proofs in the first verse? Because it's the first verse. <laughs> it's the first verse to be sent down. How else would you know it's from God? Now, how could this be from a human being? How why would somebody out of nowhere say, Iqra? بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقْ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقْ who, who else would say that? <laughs> like, which, which, which human being would, would, would begin like, uh, a, a proclamation that he is a prophet by saying that? Most human beings, if you want to claim you're a prophet, you will say, you know, I am the prophet. Right? Or, you know, you, you have some sort of verse that means, that talks about you. Right? This entire verse, the focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Lord of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So from the very beginning, right, it shows that he is being sent by who? From Allah, is being sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives you all your, your energy, your will, your power. Right? Allah gives you the ability right, to obey him and to seek knowledge of him right, before anything. Right? This is first, first and foremost for the believer. The disbeliever reads this. Right? For example, a polytheist. Right, so a polytheist reads this, and he sees Rob Bika, right? And he thinks his Rob is are uh, his idols, right? So he says, "Ikra bismi Rob Bika." Okay, read in the name of my idols, and Allah corrects him and says, "Allah di khalaq," not your idols, right? The ones that create, the, who who creates of your idols? 
which are these all these idols create? So none, none of your idols, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even the pagans of Rasulullah's time, they knew that none of the idols create. And they knew of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the God of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. And they knew that the heavens and the earth, who created? Allah. Right? Allah says to Rasulullah in the Quran, ask them who created the heavens and the earth. And they will say, Allah. I did, they will not deny it's Allah. They know it's not the idols. The idols do nothing for them. They know. Which is why when, when Abraham came to Israel, the Kaaba, they all fled and left the idols behind. <laughs> they all, I mean, when, when it comes to it, when it really comes to it, they, they, their true belief actually shows. They fled to the mountain and made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what, you know, that's what, and, then, and thereafter, what happens? They go back to their idols. And Allah says in the Quran, in other parts of the Quran, Allah says when you know, uh, He describes the, 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 the pregnancy of a woman. Right, when, a, when a man, you know, ov- he, he over, over, overshadows his woman, I mean, he goes over her, and then she becomes pregnant, and she becomes heavy. Then they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All this in the Quran. They make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, it, that if Allah, you know, were to give them a, 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 a healthy child, right, they will not ascribe any partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because at that point, who did they depend on? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, and Allah gave them a healthy child, but they turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after. Right? And, they, and they thanked all besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? for, the, for, the, for the health of the child. And then they became of those who are disbelievers. Right? So all of this, Allah describes all of these things in the Quran right? for human beings to reflect. If the atheist reads this, right? the atheist reads this, so the atheist comes in the atheist are the most skeptical of people. Right? They come and read this. Right? Read in the name of your Lord right? who created. He will see the whole thing together. In right? name of your Lord who created. He will deny this. Right? No creation. No such thing as creation. Right? Because the atheist denies that there is God. When you deny that there is God, you have to deny there is creation. Right? If, you, if you admit that there is creation, then you admit that there is a God. Right? Because if there, is, if, if, if there is creation, there has to be a creator. Who's the creator? Right? Which in Islam, the concept of God in Islam is, is profound. It's a profound concept of God. That, that you see when someone says, okay, okay, where did we come from? We came from a fluid. Where did we come from? It came from your father. Where did it come from? From his father. Where did it come from? From his father. Right? So they say that if you keep going back, 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 like who created what? So who created this? Who created that? Who created this? Who created that? You go back, right? All the way, right? And then you reach, so who created God? Right? And then you say, he can't be created because he's a creator. Right? A creator cannot be created. Right? So he is the one that is outside of the circle. And right? there's a circle whereby it's all creation. And he's outside of the circle because he created the creation. And then suddenly so he cannot be created. Right? Because otherwise he won't be God. Right? God cannot be created. So the concept of God in Islam is, is profound. It's profound how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, explains to us himself you know, in a way that we're able to understand, yet it's beyond our imagination. Right? But we're still able to understand. We're able to grasp something, but we don't know what we're grasping. But we know we know something. <laughs> we, know, we know that there is a God, right? and we know that He created. So the atheist will come to this line and he will say, no, I don't believe in creation. Then Allah sends the next line. Iqra' bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. Right, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next line, right, He created a human being from an alaq. Right, an alaq is a cloth that is hanging, that is sucking. Right, and who else at that time of Rasulullah SAW would know this? And who else would know? Because of all that, in, the, in the time that they know about, about the human being is that she gets pregnant and she gives birth. And you don't know anything else what goes, what goes on in the womb. Right, so they have no clue how this works. Right, in the womb. They, they can't even, they have, they have no scientific uh, tools, nothing. So when someone uh, miscarries, all they see is a baby coming out. That's all they see. They don't know anything right, about the creation of men in the womb in the time of Rasulullah So how would he give that in the second verse right, thereafter? So the second verse is a direct attack right, onto those. So, so when Allah subhanahu sends out his, 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 uh, his revelation, right, he's addressing all of human beings. So what are the human beings that we have? Right, the first one, Right, are those who are believers. And in fact, the first part of Surah Ikhra also includes right, those who are neither, they are basically, you would say in our time, uh, uh, agnostics. Agnostics, eh? Right, those who couldn't care less. Right, they are atheists, right, atheists, they are fervent on their disbelief in God. That means they go all out right, to prove that God does not uh, exist and they have never done so up to today. They have never proven right, the non-existence of God. They just deny it, that's all. 
I just deny the existence of God, but they have never actually proven the non-existence of God. Whereas the Quran repeatedly has proven the existence of God. The Quran repeatedly speaks about it. Right? But the atheists, right, it's all emotional. Right? It's all, you know, uh, something happened in their life whatsoever, you know. So they, they, they abandon right, the worship of God. Right? Because they feel that it's not suited to them. Right? But, they have, but nobody in the history of mankind has ever proven the non-existence of God. It's never been done. And it's never been done. They have never proven that God does not exist. Right? But it's just basically their own feelings. Right? That they feel that there's no God and they feel that they feel, but they can't actually prove it. Right? Because, because it's something it's not true. Of course you can't prove it. Right? I mean he does exist. If you try to if you try to prove it, you will prove that he does exist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the agnostic is the one who basically doesn't really care. So he's not like God, God no God, who cares now? You know, like in a way. He's the one who is indifferent. The indifferent ones, right? If I'm not wrong, that's the definition of agnostic. Eh? Right? The one who is indifferent to the existence of God. For him, right, his problem is ignorance. This is why the first ayat, Iqra. Right? Because his issue is ignorance. Right? He, is too, he is too into his own self. Right? He is too en- uh, enveloped by himself. He is too uh, self-absorbed. Right? So he can't see uh, that, that in fact he is a creation of a creator whom he should be obeying. Whom he should be worshipping. So, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Right, so, this brings the one who is an agnostic, right, who is basically indifferent about this creation, right, to wake up. Right, to think about it, if he wants to think about it. Lah. And Allah subhanahu wa will go on uh, from there. For the believer, for the believer, right, this verse humbles you. Right, because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he is a believer. And he is the best of the believers. Right, his heart is the is the heart of the of is the, the best heart that has ever been created in his entire existence. Right, better than the angels, better than anyone in his existence is the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when you see from the from the point of view of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he said iqra, right, for him it means recite, recite meaning call the people. So for him when it comes to iqra, right, iqra for on his account it means da'wah, call them. I call them by the name, meaning by the permission of your Lord, who has now made you a prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Iqra bismi rabbika. So now your Lord has given you permission. Call the people, right? And Allah says in the other parts of the Quran, Allah says the one that was sent by the permission of His Lord. That means it's Allah's permission, right, for Him to actually call people to Islam. Which is why, when it comes to the calling of people to Islam, it is important to have sanat. Right, because the permission is passed down right, From Rasulullah SAW to the Sahaba From the Sahaba to the Tabi'in Tabi'in to Tabi'in, tabi'in right, And so on right, All the way down to ourselves Whereby you, you, you get the permission from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala To call the people to Him Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala right, So you see, you know, Iqra here, it means call right, Call, like say, recite Recite to them right, By the name of your Lord right, The one that created So the first and strongest sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Is that He created And also the reason why you need to worship Him right, Why must you worship Him? Someone might ask you know, Why must you worship Him? Okay, for, for example, someone says okay, I know there's a God I know He exists I know He created I know, I know, I know He exists And I know the entire creation is because of Him Why must I obey Him? Right, why must I uh, uh, follow what He says? Why? So Allah says Because He created you and the very fact that He created you, right, it shows that He knows exactly what is good for you and He knows exactly what is harmful against you. Right? So therefore, you know, at that point, you need to obey Him if you want the best for yourself in this life. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not benefit from our obedience of Him at all. We know that. Right? Allah does not, does not, uh, is not harmed by our disobedience of Him at all. We know that. Right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of His love right, sent to us rules. Right, Allah, out of His love, gave us rulings. Right? And there was one somebody posted online, I don't know, like, but I, was, I found it very disturbing. I mean, by, she said that, that, you know, I, that she believes that to love is to allow. To love is not to allow. This is the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard in my life. Right? So, I, don't know, I, mean, I think any parent would know that. Okay? Right, if, <laughs> any parent would know that. Right? To not love is to allow them. To not love. Is to love is to constrain. Right? Wouldn't it be? Uh, to love is to put rulings. Uh, to love is to put boundaries. So what? So you don't hurt yourself? Of course. Right? I mean, you give, you give a very simple parable of a child and a parent, right? all of these rulings on the child, it's not for her benefit. It's not for the, the father's benefit or the mother's benefit. It's not for your benefit. 
It's for their benefit. Right? Most people know that. You've done it. For, most teachers know that. Right? It's not for your benefit. Or you put things on your true or on your students. It's for their benefit. For God subhanahu wa ta'ala, a billion times more. Right, infinite times more. Right, it's not for the, for his benefit. Right, so the khalaq, right, the one who created, the one who knows. So don't doubt this Lord. And in fact, you know what? Even when you were not aware that he was that, that he is the one who created you and he's the one who has been who has been sustaining you, he says Rabbika. Right, so he's been doing it all the while, even while you were un, un, unaware of this. So even while the atheist or the polytheist or the whosoever right, who is not a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Allah still sustaining him? Is Allah still providing for him? Yes, He is. So Allah still provides. Even if you deny it, Allah still provides. The rain still falls for you. Right? Even if you deny the existence of the creator of the rain. But the rain still falls. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Rahman. Right? His mercy. Whereby He shows His mercy. Rahman means He shows His mercy to all of His creations, no matter what they are. And that is Ar-Rahman. Right? Ar-Rahim is the one that shows mercy to the ones that obey Him. So it's Allah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And so Ar-Rahman unto everyone, disbeliever, disbeliever, Muslim, kafir, uh, plant, animal, whatsoever. Right? Anything he has created, Allah says in his mercy, that is from the, the name Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahim will manifest itself in its entirety in the next world. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only show his, his mercy unto those who believe in him. Right? Only those who believe in him will actually get the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who deny the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only, was only unto them while they were in this world. Right, the moment they leave the world, right, His mercy is not no longer on them as, as, how, as what we believe right, from the Quran. Right. So, bis ikhra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Right. So, and here it means that, and also it means bismi, bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. That means before you start anything that you want to do, right, remember to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, bismi rabbika. Right, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, I want to stand up again down. I said, Bismi Rabbika. That means by the, by, by the, uh, for the reason of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before you do anything, seek these two things. So Allah sets the stage. So now when you want to go through this life, two things to keep in mind. Whatever you do, do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever you do, seek Allah's blessings in doing it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Bismi Rabbika ladhi khalaq. Right. Seeking the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His name. Right. The one who created us out of nothing. And, and of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing He introduces to us of Himself is that He is a creator. Right. That's the first thing He tells us about Himself. He is a creator. So when we understand that He is a creator, then understand you cannot find Him within the creation. Because He's beyond the creation. So you, He cannot be part of this creation. Because he's the one that created the creation. It makes no logical sense to say that I need to be able to prove right, the existence of God by using the things of the creation. Doesn't make sense logically whatsoever. If someone was able to do so, then they think that they prove is not God. Can't be God. Right? Because God can't be proven by the creation. He can't. Right? But he is someone, he is only, like we understand him by reflecting on the creation. Right? By seeing his work in the creation, then we understand the doer. Of this, of this work, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the more the iqra, and so Zainab, she will always say, that when all says iqra, bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, iqra. Iqra is not just words. It's not just words. Right? Iqra is experience. Iqra is the creation. Iqra is whatever you see around it. Read, she said. She, she, she always, always tell me, wherever you go, you know, she said, Farhana, read. Read what you see around you of your life, of other people's lives, of, of your experiences, you know, of, of the mountains, of the rivers. Read them. Right? Read these things and see right, the knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will come out from the alam. So it's called the alam from the word alm. Right? Alm comes from the alam. The alam yu'allimul alm. Min al-alim. Right? So al-alim, the one who is most knowledgeable. Yu'allim bil alam. Right? He teaches us from the creation. And so when you look, it's called the alam. It's the same root word as alam. Ayn lam mim. Same root word as, as aim, the alam. Right? Because why? The alam, right? the alama, in Malay alamat, right? the alama, the, the alam, they are alamat. Alamat unto what? Unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are signs. Signs for what? Signs for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these are secrets. Right? Everywhere around you, subhanallah, it's just... You know, sometimes you use like, this is first, this first, the first verse. <laughs> right? And that's it, you know, Allah has, has, has sealed it. 
Like you still want to deny. You still want to, 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 to turn away. You still want to, you know. And in this surah, Allah speaks about Abu Jahal. Abu Jahal comes up in this surah. And of course, the most despicable of human beings. Right? The one whom Allah gave intellect. He was called Abu Hakam before Islam. Abu Hakam was his original name. It means the father of wisdom. That was his original name, Abu Jahal. Right? But when, when, when Islam came and he showed, he showed so much ignorance. And ignorance doesn't mean he doesn't know a lot of things. He knows a lot of things. But he acts in opposition to what he knows. And that is real ignorance. Right? That is foolishness. That means you know what is right, you know what is harmful, you know what is beneficial, and you do the exact opposite to what you know. Right? That is the real, you know, the idiot you would call it. Eh? The real idiot. Right? The one who knows everything right? as, as, as what is right and what is wrong, right? but he chooses the other path. Foolish one. I right? can't think. Right? The wise person, the wise person sees what is good for him, runs after it. Sees what is bad, runs away from it. That's wise. Right? The foolish person Sees what is good, rejects it. Sees what is bad, runs after it. Right? That's just, you know, even animals don't do that. <laughs> even animals, they see harm, they run. Human beings see fire, hey, watch, check it out. Hey, what, what fire? <laughs> you know, they see harm, they see, you know, the, the, the cigarette pack has, has all the pictures on it, you know, of, of people's organs whatsoever. Oh, let's smoke more. You know, it's, it's right there. Oh, no, 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 it won't happen to me. It happens to somebody else. And, pff, human being, only, only the human beings do that. Even the animals run away from cigarettes. Even animals hate it. They can't stand it. Right? You know, subhanallah. No, human beings, it's the kind of foolishness that we have. Right? May Allah subhanahu protect us, not us. And inshallah, may Allah protect us from such uh, spiritual blindness and foolishness. So here Allah subhanahu says, you know, Ikra' bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Alright, let me just get the verse out. Alright. Masayna uh, Muhammad. Right? So, uh, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so Allah describes to us Himself as a creator. Right? To remind ourselves Right, to remind us, to remind us of the greatest of all laws, uh, the greatest of all laws, ni'mah unto us, is that He created us. Right, of course, I said the greatest ni'mah is that Rasulullah was given to us, right? right but to experience Rasulullah SAW, you have to be created in the first place. Right, if you are an uncreated being, right, you will never be part of this entire circle right, of love for Rasulullah SAW. Right, in that case, it is better to be created than to be uncreated. Right, because if someone were to ask, you know, why was I born? I didn't ask to be born. I mean, alhamdulillah, you were born. Because when you are born now, you have the chance of entering paradise. As opposed to not being born. When you were not, when you were not born, you had no chance of entering paradise because you didn't exist. <laughs> you, were, you were not even you know, uh, uh, you know, a state thing. Right? Basically, you, know, you, know, you don't even exist. Right? So the, the, the coming into existence itself is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that only God can tell you that it is a ni'mah. Right? Because for us, we just came into existence. We don't realize what we have of existence. Whereby there are others who are not existing. <laughs> and they don't exist, so we can't even speak about them anyway. They're not even existing. Right? But only God tells you that it's a great ni'mah of, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He brought you into existence and He's giving you all these opportunities to get into His paradise. Right? And Imam Sayyidina Ali said, you know, how foolish a, a one right? who, who, enters into, who, who gets himself destroyed. How foolish a one. And he said, how is it, O oh, Sayyidina oh, 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 Amir al-Mu'minin, O Sayyidina Ali? He said that the one whom, who has been given tawbah and istighfar, how do you get yourself destroyed after that? And you have istighfar, you have tawbah. And how do you get yourself destroyed in the next world? And don't you know about tawbah? Don't you know about istighfar? How come you're so, you're so blind to this? And if someone in the next world comes out and says, I have all these sins. Your whole entire life in this world, they don't even bother doing tawbah or doing some istighfar or, or fasting on the, on the special days. Fasting on Arafah gets your sins uh, forgiven. Like, were, you, were you so ignorant in the entire existence that you never did any of these things? And even then, if you die as a believer, Allah can still forgive you. And subhanAllah, you know, Allah is giving us layers of layers of layers right, as to how do you save yourself. Allah is making it so as easy as possible for us because He wants to give us paradise. She's not stingy about it. Paradise has no space limit. Anybody, any, it's, it's unlimited paradise. So anyone can enter into, into paradise. So when Allah created, He wants to give. Right? But He wants us to experience this life and strive for His paradise. Because when you strive for His paradise and you enter into His paradise, only then will you taste the highest form of sweetness of paradise. Right? If you were to enter paradise without striving, you won't taste anything. Right? You understand that? Right? When someone were to ask, why can't Allah just create, us, create us in paradise? Why must He create us in this world? Right? Without this world, you will not know what is paradise. But it's because you went through this world, oh, then you know what is paradise.
and you understand what is paradise, then you will reach the heights of happiness in paradise. Because you, you understood the, the difficulty and the pain in the world. Right? The, 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 the problems of the world. So when you go to paradise, you're like, Alhamdulillah, with so much comparison, right, you will have the highest of delights. As opposed to, like, for example, the angels, they enter the paradise without any dunya. For them, it's just, it's just, it's just life. Right? That's their life. So there's no, there's no, they don't experience the ni'amah of paradise. Right? Unlike the believer who strove to enter into paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those people. Alhamdulillah. Right, so, so, Masayna Muhammad, right, so, wal murad, al amar min Allahi li, li nabiyihi bi anna yasira qari'an, bi qadratillahi qadrati Allahi alladhi khalaqahu wa iradatihi, wa in lam yakun min qabl qari'an wa la katiban, fa, fa, fa man khalaqa al kawn qadir ala an yujad fihi al qira'ah, Right. So here and here also of, of the meanings of this verse right, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one of the reciters. Right. He will be able to recite. Even though before revelation, he was never known to recite. Right. He, was not, he didn't know how to read, know how, know how to write, which was normal in that time. Right. Most of the, of the Arabs didn't know how to read and write. Right. But he was not known as one of the, one of the, uh, of the poets. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? But all of a sudden, he will be able to recite. And how is he able to recite? By the name of his Lord, by Allah subhanahu wa taala, right? Who created you? Therefore, he can create in you whatever ability he wants to create in you. Right? He can give you whatever he wants. So overnight, he can be somebody who can recite Quran, you know, in the best of Arabic language. Whereas before that, he was not known to do so. Rasulullah alaihi wasallam, right? So Allah says, خلق الإنسان من علق. خلق الإنسان من علق. So Allah, Allah stops the first verse with the word خلق. So خلق is an open-ended. Right? Read the name of your Lord who created. Right? So usually the word created will come with what do you create? A done on of created. Right? What do you create? It's those kind of transitive ver- uh, verbs whereby the verb must come with something that you did. Right? So I created what? Right? So if someone says, I have created and you will stop and you will say what? And what do you create? And only God can say, I have created, full stop. It means, of, it means all of creation is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only God can use that verb without a done on. And because, it's, because everything is a done on. <laughs> everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a done on. And of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. So, Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Khalaq al- and then Allah speaks about one of his creation. So khalaq here tells us all that you see around you is what Allah created. All. All they have to say alamin, you know, or say, you know, uh, you know uh, the, the, the parts of creation. No. He said Allah created. So whatever of creation that you see, there was a creator behind it and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of his creations, the one that he is speaking to in this verse are the, are the human beings. So Allah now addresses the human beings. Allah says, khalaq al-insana min alaq. Right, the one that created the human being right, from this, this, uh, this, this clot that clings. Right, the clot that clings. Right, so here, first and foremost, this verse tells us what? The Quran is addressing human beings. Right, it is a guide for human beings. Right, Allah, of course, it's a guide also for the jinn. Right, but, but what is being focused on here is the human beings. For the human beings to understand that you were just a, a fluid that is clinging right, onto your mother's womb. And right, that was all you are. And, and if Allah wanted to, if He could have caused you to fall from your mother's womb, and you will be dead. Right? Nothing is keeping you cl- clung there except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah makes you cling right, to this, to the mother's womb. And here is one of the mu'ajizah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, whereby in the past, they didn't know that human beings were created right, by something that was clinging. Right? No one knew what happened in the, in the wombs of, of a woman right, in the past. Right? Even now, with all their ultrasound and, and their scans, their 3D scanning and whatsoever they have right now of, 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 of their developments, it's still not enough to know exactly what goes on in the mother, right, with the child. It's still, you know, subhanAllah, Allah subhanAllah keeps all of his secret from human beings. We think we have discovered a lot of things, right, but, you know, on a day of judgment, we will really know how much we actually did discover and how much we got right <laughs> and how much we actually got wrong, <laughs> right. You know, subhanAllah, Allah subhanAllah will show us Right, to humble a human being. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقَ So the word insan here to show the humanness of the, 
of the human being, insan. That means you're mortal. And the word insan is used to show mortality. That means you were created, therefore, when you have a beginning, you will have an end. And you will die. And you will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody will die. And everybody will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. So, awjada bani Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Can. Can. You know where? Just out there. (laughs) (laughs) Alhamdulillah. Right, so the one who created human beings, right, from uh, a clot of blood, we were a clot of blood in our mother's womb. Right, and hanging right, from the mother's womb. So, you know, like, like, like the human being was, how, who would know? Really? Who would know that we were, we, were, we were sucking on our mother's womb? You know, clot, clung onto the mother's womb, sucking from her. Who, who would know that? And this means it, show, it shows the, the, the very beginning right, of the journey of the, uh, of the fetus. The very, very beginning, the embryo. And the embryo, right, that is the smallest point right, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about. Alhamdulillah. Right, and then it becomes a, a, a piece of flesh, and right? the human being becomes a piece of flesh, right? and it comes out of the mother's womb. Right? And now, even, even until today, eh? when you watch all those videos about how the human being is created in the womb, you're still amazed. Eh? It's, it's amazing to see like, from one cell, like, two cells, like, four cells, like, you know, eight cells, and like, you can watch it over and over and over again, right? and you're still amazed each time. Right, so how it looks like a monster at first, right? It looks like a, like a, like a creature. Right? And then it, then it forms his hands and his arms, his feet, legs. Right? And then it becomes a, a tiny human being. And then he grows and he grows and he grows into a real human being. Right? And, and, and then my friend, uh, once she miscarried, she miscarried you know, in, her, in, her, in her house. So the, the, the child came out and she held the child on her palm. Right? She took a picture she sent, she sent it to, uh, to me. Right? So it was like that, so small. But it was a full human being. Full human being. You can see the hand and the legs and the head. Like that. Like that. Full human being. I fell out of her, like her child, her third child. You know, uh, fell out of her like that. And that is how, they, how, how small they are. Right? And then they were, and so, so from the very beginning of, of, of creation, at first they are clots, then they become in, uh, they're, 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 they're cells. Then they become small human beings that don't look like human beings. But within a very, very short while, they actually become tiny human beings. Right? And they actually grow into a full baby. Right, so, and that no matter how many times you watch this, right, you will be awed over and over and over and over again as to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Right, and if you've ever seen those kind of uh, videos of uh, baby animals, right, embryo, animal embryo, have you ever seen? Right, go and watch. Very, very nice to watch. Right, that they have like an ultrasound of like giraffes or elephants or, tig- or tigers, uh, sharks, and they will show the baby developing in the womb of the mother. Right, and a small shark inside a shark. <laughs> like, kind of right, so you can actually like you can find it online. It's all online. I can go and look into it, like like how the, the 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 giraffe's baby is in the giraffe. You know, position how the neck is bent and everything. It's all God. <laughs> like who who else would know how to position the baby of the baby giraffe in the mother giraffe? And then when she falls out of the mother, all oh, it's all online. You can find it. It's on YouTube. <laughs> you can go and find. It. You want to watch? It's like Allah subhanahu wa taala. Just read, right? Read the creation. Go and read my creation. Read, the, read my creation. Go and look into my creation. You will find the Creator in the creation, and in a sense, you will find the signs of the Creator in the creation. This can't be out of nowhere. It can't be, you know, uh, by chance. It can't be, you know, as well like what the, 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 this, 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 you know, these people say that, that, that there is no creator. There is a creator, right, who has designed the creation, right? So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So here I'm going to read this part, eh? right? So uh, from from uh, from a clot, right, uh, and then it becomes a human being. So here, وَيُلَاحِزْ أَنَّهُ تَعَالَى أَطْلَقَ الْخَلْقَ أَوَلًا لِتَنَاوَلَ كُلُّ الْمَخْلُوقَاتِ ثُمَّ خَصَّ الْإِنْسَانَ بِذِكْرِ لشرفه أو لعجيب فطرته أو لأن الآية 
suyaqat min ajlihi. Right. So here he says. So notice that you see that Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions created as a general statement. Right? Allah created. Then Allah goes and He specifies a human being. Has been insan. Right. He specifies the human being for what reason? First and foremost, for the nobility of the human being. Right. He is noble. Because of this race, of his, of his speeches, comes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the very fact that Allah made Rasulullah of the human beings, that already it is a nobility itself for human beings. That the best of creation is from you. Not even from the angels. It is from the human beings. That means you can be the best of creation, O oh human beings. And that is the first thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sense of the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ And for surely Allah has ennobled or honoured the son of Adam. Right, so that is the first reason why Allah mentions human being. Second one is that for the amazing, uh, for how amazing it was, the creation of the human being. So Allah creates a human being. And you might say, oh, but the other parts of creation is not as amazing as human beings. Right, but no, Allah subhanahu wa tells us further that in the human being is this thing called the ruh. Right, the human being is unlike his other creation. Right, while we seem to be smaller, or the smallest thing of creation, we see the sky, the sun, the planets, the, you know, they're huge, humongous. Right? But the, the thing about the human being is that Allah gave a human being choice. We actually have choice, and we have a ruh. Right? And we are able to aspire in a way that the other creations cannot aspire. Right? The other creations, they have to obey Allah, they have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are given the choice, and we are given the ability to fight. Right, our lower desires and to strive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which makes a human being very different right, in his creation and the ruh that Allah says Allah, Allah blows into every human being is from the secrets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't understand what this means actually we really don't understand what it means right, except that we know that this ruh that is in, in us is our essence and when this ruh is separated from our physical bodies then we are no longer in this world we have gone to a different dimension altogether so the human being, you know, when Allah created the human being, there are aspects of the human being. It's not just our physical beings, our ruh that Allah created. And only Allah knows the secrets of the ruh. Right? So how, why Allah says you know, that the human being, the, the creation of the human being is the greatest of creations. Right? Because, you know, subhanAllah, because of the ruh that is in the human being. Right? Or it is also because that these ayahs are sent down right, because of the human being. For the sake of the human being, all these ayahs were sent down, right? Wa inna maqal bismi rabbika wa lam yaqul bismillah right? Kama fi tasmiyat al-ma'arufa Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Li anna al-rab man sifat al-fi'al Wallah min asma'i al-zat Wa bima annahu amarahu bil-ibadah Wa sifat al-zat al- al- la yastawjibu shay'an Tamam وَإِنَّمَا يَسْتَوْجِبُ الْعِبَادَةَ صِفَاتَ الْفِعْلِ فَكَانَ ذَلِكَ أَبْلَغَ فِي حَثِّي عَلَى الطَّاعَةِ وَالْخُلَاصَةِ أَنَّهُ لَمْ يَأْتِي بِلَفْظِ الْجَلَالَةِ لِمَا فِي لَفْظِ الْرَبِّ مِنْ مَعْنَى مِنْ مَعْنَى مِنْ مَعْنَى الَّذِي رَبَّاكَ وَنَظَرَ فِي مَصْلَحَتِكَ وَجَاءَ الْخِطَابَ لِيَدُلُّ لِيَدُلَّ وَالِخْتِصَاصِ أَيْ لَيْسَ لَكَ رَبُّ غَيْرُ لَيْسَ لَكَ رَبٌ غَيْرُ Alright, so what does he say here? Look at this word, بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ is used and not بِسْمِ اللَّهِ right, Instead of saying بِسْمِ اللَّهِ, Allah says بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ And in other parts of the Quran, Allah says بِسْمِ اللَّهِ right, And why is it بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ and not بِسْمِ اللَّهِ Right, the word Rob, as you mentioned just now earlier, Rob is the one, it encompasses the one who does things for you. Right, the Rob. Right, the Rob is the word Tarbiya. Right, tarbiya to nurture. Right, so the one who takes it, it who makes it his affair to see your development. And right, he is with you every step of the way. Right, as, your, as your progress towards him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to Allah, Right, the word Allah is the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is God, He is Allah. Right, but Allah is a word that is, that is distant. Right, but Rabb is a word that is very close, very near. Right, so when it comes to Allah, right, Allah instills in the human being the understanding right, that Allah is the one that created. Whereas the word Rabb, Right, the word Rob instills in the human being the understanding, the one that 
created you, looked after you, took care of you, and therefore you only it is only becoming of you to worship him. So the word Rob calls upon obedience. As the word Iqra calls upon obedience, the word Rob also calls upon obedience. Right? That's why the, 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 the Murabi, right? the Murabi is the one who nurtures you. If you have a Murabi, for, for me, I have a Murabiya, my Ustada, she's my Murab, Murabiya, she nurtures me. Right? So because she nurtures me, right? for me to gain the full benefit from her, I need to obey her whatever she tells me. Right? Because she knows the path. And she knows the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I really want to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I need to follow her as hard what she tells me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is God. He knows the way to Him. So if you really want to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do you have to do? Obey Him. Right? Obey Him. And so the word Rabb, right? the word Rabb that means the focus, my, my desire, my ultimate aim, my ultimate goal is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the word Rabb instills in a human being, ta'a. And it instills in you obedience. Because in the very beginning of the Quran, Allah will drive through right, to us, right? Drive to us obedience, obedience, obedience. And right? there is no way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, uh, so, so when Allah says, you know, Rabb, right, or the meaning of your Lord, the one who nurtured you, right? Nazara fi maslihatika. Like, uh, fi maslihatik. Right? The one who watches as to what will benefit you. وَجَاءَ الْخِطَابِ لِيَدُلُّ عَلَى تَأْنِيسِ وَالْإِخْتِصَاسِ right, And the word Rabb, right, to show closeness and love right, and focus on the human being, right, the word Rabb. Right, and you have no other Rabb except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And right, nobody looks up to you except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. And okay, now about Rabb, about Bismi Rabbika, right, the, the connection to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why is the Rabb? Uh, uh, connected to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it shows us that if you want to get to Allah subhanahu wa taala, then you must go through Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the best way for you to get close to Allah subhanahu wa taala is what that you go through Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's why his name is there. I mean, he, the pronoun that points to him is to point us to him. And you go to him and you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you want to know the reality of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you observe this man. And when you observe this man, uh, you will know, you know what it means to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Right. Uh, Asra bi abdihi. Right. So, wa inna ma dhakar qawl ladhi khalaq ibada qawlu rabbik la istidlal ala annahu rabbahu wa huwa alladhi awjadahu fa sara mawjudan ba'da an yaku abada an kana ma'duman wal khalq wal ijadu tarbiyatun wa kathalika jaa bi sifati al khalik ay am munshi nil alam للإتيان بصفة لا يمكن للأصنام. نعم. Right. So here he says, so of course we mentioned just now the uh, Allah the Khalak. Right. So so the one that created to show truly who is the real Lord. Look for the one who created Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who created. Okay, we'll pause there. It's really ten o'clock. It's too fast. Eh? Only one hour. Because <laughs> it came late. But I don't want to hold you. Right, inshallah next week, and right, we will go with Iqra wa Rabbukal Akram. Right, Iqra wa Rabbukal Akram, Alladhi Allama Bil Qalam, Allama Al Insan Ma Lam Yalam. Right, so let's see. Right, Allama Al Insan Ma Lam Yalam. Alright, then they will go into the meaning, the, 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 the lessons of this, of these few verses. Right, the second part, I'm just going to recite it because I always want to just give you all like uh uh, you know something from 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 a later part. I mean, Allah says, "أرأيت الذي ينها عبدا إذا صلى أرأيت إن كان على الهدى أو أمر بالتقوى أرأيت إن كذب وتولى ألم يعلم بأن الله يرى كلا لا إن لم ينتهي لا نسفع بالناصية." ناصية كاذبة خاطئة فليدعو نادية سندأ الزبانية كلا 
لا تطيعه واسجد وقتر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر. Okay, I'm just going to tell the story of this part. Maybe we're going to stop there. Okay. Right. So this part about kalla inna insan latliyatqa. All of these verses are about Abu Jahal. Right. All of these ayats, they are about Abu Jahal. So this from a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When this verse, right? When this verse was revealed, so kalla inna insan latliyatqa. Right. Rather, the human being he transgresses. After all that Allah has given him and done for him, he transgresses. He's speaking about Abu Jahal specifically, but human beings at large. So Abu Jahal said, "Hal you arif Muhammadun wajhahu bayna azharikum?" So he said, "Naam." So he said, "Wallati wal azza." La in ra'ay la in ra'ay tuhu yafal la atna an ala rukbatihi. Right. Wala wala. وَعَرِّفَنَّ وَجْهَهُ فِي التُّرَابِ فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَتَغَى right. so, so, so Abu Jahal This is Abu Jahal eh? right. When this verse Abu Jahal once came out And he says Does, does Muhammad come out here and pray right, At this Kaaba right. And then they say yes he does Then Abu Jahal he swears by his idols And he says for surely If I see him doing that If I see him praying amongst us in the Kaaba, I will go there and I will step on his neck when he is in sujud. I will go and I will step right. Can you imagine someone who's doing sujud and someone and a big Abu Jahl is a big, bulky, fat man, He's huge, enormous Abu Jahl. So he swore that he saw if he sees Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying in the near the Kaaba, he will go there. He'll put his foot on his the neck of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and crush the neck. Of Rasulullah SAW with his entire weight, you know Abu Jahl. I said he so he swore by his by his idols and he will do that, and I and I will make his face be known to the to the dust, you know, like they, they press his face into the dust. And that's how ugly he is. Then Allah revealed the word kalla in al insan yatara for surely the human being he transgresses. Right then then thereafter Abu Jahl saw Rasulullah SAW praying near the Kaaba. Right, so he wanted to. Uh, he wanted to 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 go and uh, 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 step on the neck of of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when he went, so the, and and the, 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 the believers were all there, and they were all watching. And he said, "Oh Abu Jahl, you swore by Lat and Uzza, which is the idols. You swore by our idols that if you see Muhammad praying by the Kaaba, you're going to step onto his neck and break his neck. Go ahead, go and do it." So Abu Jahl went, and this is the Azbab Nuzul. Eh? Abu Jahal went right, to to Rasulullah SAW to step on his neck, and he before he went near Rasulullah SAW, he came back running, with his face completely, uh, 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 you would say, he, like in shock, right? Completely in shock. He was like, you know, like, like, like he was in in a in a, in a state lah. And described in Arabic, he said it was in a state. And they say, ma, you know, ma laka ya Abu Hakam. And what's wrong with you, Abu Hakam? The believers call him Abu Hakam. And what's wrong with you, Abu Hakam, Abu Jahal? And he says that you know when I went. To destroy Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when I went to step on his neck, right? Suddenly, I saw a huge pit of fire, right? That was between me and him. A huge khandaq, he said, a huge pit of fire, right? And it was coming out, you know, and blazing in my face. Had I taken one more step, my whole body will be ashes. And he ran away, right, from that, uh, from that sight, right? So that is the one that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, right? But Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in these verses, He does speak about Abu Jahal, and He speaks about. Don't you see? If only he believed, if Abu Jahal believed, he would have been one of the greatest Muslims. If he had believed, because Allah gave him intellect, right? and in fact, in fact, the proof of that is in Sayyidina Omar. Right? Sayyidina Omar, that when Rasulullah made dua, that may Allah guide all of the Omarins, and the Omarin are Sayyidina Omar and, Sayyidina and Abu Jahal. Right? They both had similar characteristics. They were both very influential. They were very powerful. Right? They were both uh, very brave people, right? And they both had intellect. Right? They were both very smart people. Sayyidina Omar and Abu Jahal. Sayyidina Omar was in fact the nephew of Sayyidina, of, of the nephew of Abu Jahal. Right? Sayyidina Omar was the nephew of Abu Jahal. So when Allah says, like, uh, Do you see if only he was on truth? 
Aw amara bi taqwa or he would actually you know command to righteousness and that is Sayyidina Umar. Araita in kadhab wa tawalla rather despite or in spite of his intellect he turns away and he walks away. Right that is Abu Jahal. I alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. I can't he know doesn't he know that Allah sees him? Right? Allah sees a ghost in his mind. Allah knows that Allah gave to Abu Jahal. Right, so Abu Jahal, this whole, this whole ayat at the end of Surah, of Surah Alaq speaks about Abu Jahal and also about every obstinate, uh, uh, arrogant person who refuses to hear the truth. Right? Every person who's like that. So inshallah, next week we'll finish up this part. I actually, uh, a few more verses on the first part and the next part. Eh? So Alhamdulillah, it's one of the surahs that really, you know, subhanAllah, it's all the surahs I had that blew you away. <laughs> right? But it's like, subhanAllah, the Quran, you know, over and over again, uh, over and over again, the Quran, right, it never, never fails to amaze. It's like Abu Jahal himself was addicted to the Quran. He was so addicted to the Quran. He had to come every night to the Rasulullah's house to listen to the Quran. Because it was so addictive. He couldn't, he, his intellect told him this a speech like none other. Right, and he, had, he just had to. Right, but his, his ego, and the nafs, the ego, Right, refuse to let him uh, submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to admit that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is indeed a prophet. Right, so he could not do that. He, could, he, just, he just couldn't right, break through his ego. Right, and that is the sadness. Right, and Allah, so you see here, the first verse addresses everybody in this creation, right? But still, people will disbelieve. Why? Because of their own egos. Right, it's never because of proof that people disbelieve, ever. Right, it's never because of proof in this creation, right, or proof of whatever that people get out of Islam. Right? People only reject Islam or get out of Islam out of ignorance or out of ego, right? Your own your own arrogance and that pulls people out. Right? Nothing else pulls them out. Right? Ignorance or arrogance. So these are the two things that pull people away from the truth. Where, and how do you get rid of them? The first one, ignorance, go and learn. When you learn, the more you will see the truth. Arrogance, pray. The more you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sincerity, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the arrogance right, from, uh, from your heart. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma alhamdulillah. Allahumma alhamdulillah. Allahumma alhamdulillah. Waj'alhu lana imama wa nura wa huda wa rahma. اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الفاتحة أن الله يرزقنا إما النافع ما خالص مقبول وحسن التعاليم مدلالة على الهدى ويسر به قلب النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه سلام والأرواح معلمين ومشايخنا وذوي الحقوق علينا وإلى حتى نمس الله سلام الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين